It's Wednesday, April the 12th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today evening update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, police are reported to be making inroads into ridding the streets of illegal guns. Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Braffitt said this morning there is an increase in the number of firearms being seized as police intensify their anti-crime strategy in light of a worrying spate of gun violence across the island. We are very concerned that I mean, the strategy is or the strategy of the Royal Barbers Police Force, I can tell you that as, as a policy maker, um, that I'm doing what I can to give them additional support. Um, but I'm sure that the Commissioner of Police or, or anyone like that, they're not going to come and tell you exactly what they're doing uh, to try to clear up um, the, the level of gun violence and stuff. But what, what I can say is that you will notice that there's an increase of the number of firearms being seized, for example. So, um, but it's kind of difficult to be out at 2 o'clock in the morning when guys have been over it. So, um, you can target certain individuals as, as, as they do, and as the time it comes in, you, you know, you can do raids, etc. Um, I, I believe you can probably see more police presence on, on the road at night in terms of, you know, in terms of when we are aware of certain events and things. There, um, there are multiple things that, that we have to do in terms of strategy, and um, that's an issue for the Royal Barbers Police. Rathwick was speaking during the handing over of a court recording a software system at Simatias Magistrates Court that will help cut down the thousands of cases waiting for trial and the 200 being added each year. Thanks to the donation from the United States Embassy, installation of the equipment, which will be replicated in all Magistrates Courts, would provide them with the ability to digitally record cases and facilitate a video link with witnesses and plaintiffs from remote locations. By the end of May. By the end of May. Uh, because no use having one magistrate being able to record his evidence electronically mm -hmm. and then the others. So by the end of May, I can confirm all of the magistrates will be able uh, to have access to uh, electronic record of, of, of evidence. Um, as the registrar said, you know, for generations, magistrates have been writing everything by long hand. Um, and you're, you're right. It's what time frame they've been brought into. <laughs> The 21st century, that's what we're doing. In other news now, a secondary school teacher here has likened the marking of the controversial schools based assessments to slavery. Speaking from the floor during a lecture by CXC registrar Glen Roy Cumberbatch at the Queen's Park Steel Shed last night, Charlotte Aline Green complained that while she labors by marking and remarking about 60 SBAs without pay, markers of the oral English examination were paid. She called for pay equity and compared her conditions to slavery. To learn that the language teacher is getting $62.50 to conduct that oral, which will be seen as a paper tree in that exam, I'm not getting a dollar, not a cent, to conduct three drafts, say, per 60 students, if I got 30, 30, yeah, two. So, 30 and 30, 60, yeah. At least two classes, three times per student. That is not fair. So I think it's about time that there be equality being shown to the markers of the SBAs across the board, not just in one area, but all the subject disciplines. Retired Deputy Principal of the University of the West Indies Cafel Campus, Professor Pedro Welch, said when he was teaching, SBAs were never an imposition, but rather a way of helping teachers with students. It was an aid to me, not, 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 a, not, a, um, not, a, not a, what we call, not, not an, an imposition. So I'm just wondering, in this current climate, when there are these questions about CXC and whether people should be paid for doing CXC, uh, sorry, SBAs, if the SBA, if, if you pass um, the original formulation, have we moved past that? Is there, has the SBA changed in its function in terms of helping teachers to be able to, to locate the students in a, in a particular curriculum? And the CXC registrar noted that SBAs were helpful to the teachers in bringing together students into one group instead of having to deal with them individually. What has changed though is that Instead of doing those um, 20, those nine, um, you will do one project now for history, 
And that one project can also be a group project, including more than one student uh, within, within that process as, as a thing. So we have looked at it. We try not to remove that aspect of teacher's contribution to information that will help us make judgments of the pupil's ability. But we have tried to make it in a way that works um, for both purposes, to assist teachers in doing it, but also to give good, reliable um, information to us. There's regional and international news after this short break. Good morning, Phyllis and Company may help. Oh, certainly, one moment, please. Miss Phillips, yeah. there's a lady on the line from the Nation newspaper who would like to speak with you. The Nation? Wish you could want? Well, they're trying to sell us some ads. Look, don't make me laugh this morning. Ads in the Nation? They're real expensive, and for one year, nobody ain't buying them papers no more. Nobody ain't want to steal news. I hear reading Barbados today online for free. So I tell she thanks for calling, but no thanks. We just advertise in Barbados today, families. Tell she is Barbados today all the way. Okay, I'll pass on the message. Mom, are you still there? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. We're back with news from the region now. The first round of talks between Guyana and Venezuela over the territorial dispute is scheduled to open in Georgetown next week. The United Nations appointed mediator would be arriving in Guyana to try to resolve the long-standing controversy where Caracas is claiming waters off the Exequibo territory that borders Venezuela and encompasses more than half of Guyana. Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, in February, appointed Norwegian Dag Halvor Nylande to help broker a settlement by the end of 2017 between Guyana and Venezuela with a strengthened mandate of mediation. Foreign Minister Carl Greenwich says the United Nations appointed envoy is scheduled to visit Guyana soon. For purposes of holding discussions in keeping with the mandate given to him in turn by the UN Secretary General. And um, that is part of the exercise in which... Mr. Nylander was appointed under the aegis of the Geneva Agreement and the United Nations Secretary General was mandated to choose an option for the resolution of the contention by Venezuela that the 1899 agreement is null and void. He is to have discussions with Venezuela and the government, with the government of Guyana with a view to seeing how far they can move in relation to the resolution of the controversy. The Nicolas Maduro-led nation has laid claim to waters of the Essequibo, a territory that borders Venezuela and encompasses more than half of Guyana. And on the international scene, Russian President Vladimir Putin said today that trust had eroded between the United States and his country under President Donald Trump as Moscow delivered an unusually hostile reception to Secretary of State Tillerson in a face-off over Syria. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov meeting in Moscow. And there's more than a table separating them. Our meetings today come at an important moment in the relationship so that we can further clarify areas of common objectives, areas of common interest, even when our tactical approaches may be different. This bit's for the cameras. Behind closed doors, specific tensions over the war in Syria are likely to spill over. Russia has reacted furiously to a U.S. missile strike last week, targeting a Syrian airbase suspected of launching a chemical weapons attack. The mudslinging stepping up Wednesday. President Vladimir Putin saying trust between the U.S. and Russia has deteriorated since Donald Trump took office and asserting that the reported chemical attack could have been faked to discredit the Syrian government. Across the Atlantic, one White House source has accused Russia of a cover-up. The Trump administration saying Tuesday Moscow was trying to shield President Bashar al-Assad's government. The rhetoric and tensions being ratcheted up ahead of this face-to-face. -face. Only a week ago, it was supposed to be about a rapprochement. 
The key words for the cameras here about addressing misunderstandings and increasing cooperation. But on Syria, the pair only appear to be moving further away from each other. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic evening.